do the Just Your Football show and, I it mean, we couldn't... We, it's not on. It is on, bro. Uh, we no. could make it... Yeah, it definitely is. You've messed up my <laughs> intro there. Let's go again. <laughs> it wasn't right. on on mine. It, it was, was on. on, man. It is on. Uh, honest, honest. It's 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 honest. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I had a script ready and everything, Andrea. No, I'm joking. Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It's time for what we could, I mean, name the, the, the final word because the league's boxed off now. It's done. Finito, Leeds United hit top spot with um, eight games left to play. But um, listen, I've made a bold prediction. I stand by it as well. Um, of course, Leicester could win all their games. Maybe they won't. Maybe they will, but I don't think Leeds United will. I mean, we might drop points, we might draw, but I don't see us getting beat uh, between now and the end of the season. I don't think anyone can step to us at the minute. Daryl says, yes, what a panel. Yeah, I overbooked, but who cares because it's celebration time because Leeds United hit top spot with a comfortable 2-0 win against, for me, what is normally a banana skin, uh, a really tough test, and we came through it with flying colours. So, yeah, um, we're flying so we're, we're going to go from like clockwise or something. We'll just go around first of all and uh, find out what people's thoughts were on the game and uh, whether or not we're going up as effing champions because I'm hoping, looking at the panel, that everyone will agree. Maybe. Maybe not Joe. Maybe not Joe. <laughs> um, although, to be fair, right, okay. <laughs> I don't know who's doing this, right, but I reckon it might be one lone wolf setting up loads of different accounts, but I keep getting comments saying, Jez, so much more professional than you. So whoever's done it knows that it ground my goat that day and have now decided to set up loads of accounts. So whoever it is, stop being an absolute whopper and go out and touch grass and stop commenting on my channel. What's anyway, right. Oh, man, I've been Joe. injured. I can't go out. Hey? What's grounding a goat? What is it grinding the goat? Grinding my gears? Gears. Yeah, gears. I think it's gears, mate. So what's... I don't know what grinding the goat is. I think that's what I was doing. Because he's saying he is the goat and he's being grinded. Ground... By the... Yes, <laughs> that was it. Ah, it was right, method it. to my got madness. It. Exactly. Right, Luke, <laughs> come on. Talk to me. You were at the game. Um, yeah, great performance, right? Yeah, mate. I was I was there sober as well, so I tend to remember a bit more when I, when I, when I don't have a drink. Um... Just all round, as you say, banana skin Neil Harris on a good run of form. You know, yeah, it, 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 not being at home all season, it had it it had the makings of of if we were going to slip up, that could have been the one, couldn't it? Do you know what I mean? Um, but really professional. I think I think within the whole ninety minutes, I didn't feel like they were in the game for at any stage. Really, they, I mean, don't get me wrong, they they had a couple of chances, but. It, it was a very professional, very well thought out performance. Um, and look, there's, there's there's often a lot of frustration around me when we don't get the ball and we don't get forward immediately and we don't head to goal and we don't we don't try and score with every 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 possession. Um, but I, I think that's the measure of us now. We're a lot more well controlled and we and we do things a little bit more reluctantly well so we might we might you know build from the back a little bit more and, and Rodon and Ampadu are quite happy to sit at the back while we're one or two nil up with a ball at the feet for 20 seconds and not and not do anything if there's no movement you know which which mm. as a fan in the ground it can be quite frustrating you want to see your team win five or six nil but it's professionalism and and look that's what's won us a lot of games this season and a lot of points as well uh based on Farkas style of play and and yeah I think it was a really really well thought out and and, and we frustrated him. Yeah, we did, mate. You're right. Um, I mean, I hear what you're saying. Like, we don't need to go all out guns blazing, do we, all the time to, to bash teams up. Like, at the end of the day, Ipswich beat Chef Wednesday 6-0. We beat them 2-0. We both got three points. It, it's irrelevant, really. I think we're in that stage of the season, Andrea, where it's, look, Points win your prizes. Get through games however you can. And look, at the end of the day, Andre, the most important thing for me is we are still yet in 2024 to concede a goal from open play. So do what you want. Yeah, you might get a set piece, you might get a penalty, but, you know, outside of that, you shall not pass because the, the defence the defense is phenomenal, Andre, and didn't get touched again, I don't think. I think there was one chance for... Obafemi, Obafemi that, yeah. yeah, which maybe Rodon overcommitted, but then Andrea, uh, not Andrea, <laughs> Ampadu was right <laughs> behind him and just stood up and just shepherded him out of play. So they just can't, you can't get past that spine, I don't think, Andrea. Yeah, we're so balanced now. We are so balanced and 
you know, since the start of the season, and I I underline again, you know, that uh, looking at how we ended 2023, you know, with uh, that that two bad results, you know, coming out of those, those two bad results that couldn't have changed our season. I remember that mm. uh, looking at the table now, you know, uh, many thought that uh, the automatic spots were were uh, far out of reach, you know, coming out of those two, but of that bad spell, you know, and making this run and with the little changes at Park MA, you know, I think now there's balance, there's uh, like Lou said, you know, you, you don't feel threatened, you feel a lot of calm and cool and you, you feel that the team is calm and collected, you know, and uh, you know, we are so um, so smart in doing the right thing at the right time, you know, moving the ball, switching the sides, you know, um, and absolutely uh, lethal when it comes to um, having a, a good opportunities inside the box, you know. Uh, I think we, of course, uh, yesterday we scored from outside, but we, we're moving the ball pretty pretty well all around, I think. So it's good because you create chances to ball possession and pass creation, but when we are defending, we are so balanced and we don't consider space. That's the most important thing, you know, uh, out there. Um, that's why I think um, the season will end in one possible way. There's only one possible way this so far this season will end for me because right now, if you look at the team, it's it's all say in it, harmony. Andrea, what's that one possible way, brother? No, say I it. won't say because I'm I'm Italian. You know that we are superstitious, <laughs> but it look it looks now looking at our our also our schedule. You know, uh, I think we already played. Of course, there's uh, two or three tough fixtures like Boro, Coventry, Watford. I think also is a a potential one. But I think we already played uh, all the best teams, you know, Ipswich, Norwich, uh, a, a difficult team for us every time, you know, uh, Southampton. So, so far we, we have shown that we belong there and the results are just the result of how we're playing, the, um, the mentality that we have and all of that, you know. It's great to have you back. How how, how good's that, folks? Yeah. We've missed Andrea on the channel. Great to have some uh, everyone's favourite Italian back with us. Uh, so big up to you, Andrea. No, I yeah, it's agree. A, yeah, it's Go a on, pleasure mate. to be back. I, yeah, I wanted to, to to say hi to everyone, of course. Um, yeah. Of you have been busy a lot. Missed being on, but it's good to be on with you and and all the guys. You know, all the lads is. It's yeah. great to, to talk about football again, you know. Yeah, man. It's been a active back. period, yeah. He's yeah. come back with a nice new trim as well, man. You're looking yeah, yeah, exactly. Fresh. I had to yeah, do yeah, an interview, yeah, yeah. so I had to, to cut my hair, unfortunately, because I like it long, but, <laughs> you know. Same here, yeah. And a Conor <laughs> yeah. Roberts tash. Yeah, yeah, Roberts yeah, tash, yeah. From Strack <laughs> to Roberts, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. What's this? But speaking of haircuts, by the way, someone popped in my chat the other day. They were saying you pay, like, 30 quid to get your beard trim at the barber's joke. 25, yeah, and then they 25 want 25 with a five yeah. pound tip, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh... neck, that's, that's when I go, well, that's when I go to, to, to the Kurdish barbers around the corner, but I've stopped going now, mate, and I just go to the normal gentleman's barbers. But yeah, that's why I said I stopped. Um, How much does he have? like 10 15 quid for the bid? What, around the there? Yeah, yeah, other places. Scotty's Barbers. Yeah, well, it depends. Like, I went in the other day and told them I was meeting someone and they just went over it and put it on a three and then went, don't worry about it, Joe. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, nice one. <laughs> Love the channel. Yeah, man. <laughs> no, they don't, <laughs> no. And then I went on Sunbeds, you know what I mean? It is what it is. It's the life of luxury <laughs> right here, living in Sunderland. <laughs> like, Most right. ginger people hide away from Sunbeds and there you were going straight up to them and going, I'll have you. Yeah, I'll have exactly, you. man. You will not beat me. You will not beat me until, I, yeah. Anyway, let's not talk about that because I get warned about it all the time. Um, Lockie, you were at the game, brother. Uh, you've mm -hmm. been a very busy guy as well with uni and whatnot, so it's great to have you back. Um, how was it for you, mate? Where were you? Um, did you enjoy it? Did your dad go with you? Your dad went right. It yeah, yeah, we were right at the top of these literally roads. Heads <laughs> right at the oh, back. Really? Where you get told <laughs> sit down, guys. sit down. They were actually all right. Stu was right it? up there. To be fair, but there were um, there were three cockneys in front of us. <laughs> they were brilliant. They were screaming in class. Yeah, good <laughs> to be back. Honestly, it's good to feel the atmosphere again and march on together at the start and end of the game as well. You know, it's always it's always special. Yeah, it's, it was great to be back, mate. And the performance was. You know what? Do you want to watch it? I, I, I like to watch Farka and his reactions. That that second goal. Yeah, he knew about that. the he league, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah. knew he that that second goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and and, and now you know what I watch with him. I don't not about the players, but with Fark specifically. He, is I don't think he feels like he's got all to prove. I think he he's got that expectation that he knows what he's capable of because he's literally 
won this thing twice. When you see these teams like Ipswich, for example, are doing unbelievable. McKenna has got to prove at this level. Mm. You know, Mareska has got to prove. Russell Martin has got to prove. Daniel Farker doesn't. He just knows what to do. And that's that's how we play, I think. It is sensible. Because at both ends, you know you've got this defence that is unbelievable. So don't expose them. Keep that the way it is. And you know you've got four players up top who can win a game even when you're playing bad. So he knows he's got that either end. So it's just about maintaining control of the game. You know, I've watched Ipswich this year. I've watched Leicester, Southampton. And for me, especially Ipswich, who I'm not thinking, by the way, they're unbelievable going forward. They don't Shit have control the of the back a lot. Yeah, they don't so have bad. control, yeah. And it's that's where, we're, as a mature side, like yeah, Andre said, we are extremely balanced. And that is key. And you're seeing the running now. I think, what is it, two games in a row we've lost? We've not lost more than two in a row, have we, this season? We've reacted. No. Yeah. I think that happened once as well, yeah. So that's experience. <laughs> that's the, the um, yeah, my, my, my house is like a, a train station, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry about it. No, so yeah, it's it's that experience that he's got. And um, yeah, and we'll get into individual play stuff because I've got some things to talk about the individual players. But overall, very happy and impressed with it. I think even when we're off the ball out of position, and I know it's a bit scary sometimes, but our shape's brilliant. Yeah. Albert Femi for me, yeah. he's a very good player. I like I liked his movement. He was very quick on the ball. But Built like a brick we were... shit out as yeah, well. He quick as massive... well, yeah. And we should tell him that when he plays for Ireland. He plays like a twelve year old who's never Yorkish. kicked the ball in his life. Oh, is he playing for Ireland? Yeah. He's yeah. brutal for Ireland. Really? Really? Very happy. Very happy, Joe. Yeah, no, I agree. German efficiency, someone said in the comments, Joe. It's mm. right, yeah. Like Wee. someone's just said there, and I disagree with this sentiment. Um, but I'll put it up, and you can answer it. It says all the top teams will drop points before the end of the season. I wish Leeds would be more positive and stop taking so long to develop an attack. Too much time passing sideways and backwards. But Joe, yeah, that's the whole point of control, right? Yeah. I was listening to the square ball earlier. They made a great point. They say, yeah, we can. And listen, I'm not throwing shady because I love the man. But Bielsa, it was hectic all the time. Whereas under Farker, it's like, yeah, okay, you might not have had as much entertainment, but we just don't lose do you know what i mean we don't lose currently there's an old saying in football coaching joe you don't move the ball to move the ball you move the ball to move the opposition that's the point of moving the football um especially when you're playing against the low block we said this don't know how many times but it hasn't worked against low blocks i've been on here saying you've got to move the ball quickly you've got to move the ball continuously you've got to go left to right you've got to get it back into the middle of the park as quick as you can what you saw yesterday where there was a couple of really nice moments of that where Leeds have a tendency to always attack down Cree side. They're, they're, they're nearly hard work to always go down the left. You look at the stats and the, the possessions, that's most of the play on our, is on our left. But we did what we did really well yesterday was we went over to the left, back into the centre, looked to go out to the right, that, faint, that little feint opens the back line up a little bit, go back to the left, brings them back across again, comes back to the middle. Again, little faint. They separate a bit more. Back to the left. Back to the left. And then when it comes back in centre, when they've all been pulled across, that's when the quick ball goes out to Nanto. Nanto cuts inside and you get a goal from it. So there's this whole thing about being patient in possession, knowing that what you're trying to do is to move the opposition to an area that you want them to be in so you can capitalise then in an area that they've been pulled away from, which tends to always be down our right-hand side. That's where you get the Dan James pace. And when he's been on the park, or, or Willie Nonto's impact when he's there as well. So it's, it's about dragging people out of position. So for me, slow build-ups, I would like to see us putting four or five past teams. I, I, I listened to the square ball awesome. today as well. And I thought, yeah, I'd love to see it. But at the same time, that didn't work particularly well outside of the division that we were in. It gets picked up pretty quickly. The sacrifice, there's always a sacrifice to every system of play. Bielsa's was man-marking. And that, unfortunately, teams can figure that out pretty... Good managers can figure that out and figure out ways to beat my American systems, which happened. Barker's system is slightly different in as far as it's a bit of both. He can defend if he needs to attend. They can attack if they need to attack. They can increase the tempo when they need to. They can slow it down when they need to. My only issue has always been, I think, when we do slow the tempo down, we're not at our best. And our poorest performance this year is when we've gone down into second gear and haven't been able to get back out of it. Yesterday was slightly different for me, though, because... I haven't been that comfortable watching Leeds yeah. one nil up against a team when the drop off, when when our so usual our yeah. second half drop off has happened, um, I'm usually kind of going, can you do it go now? This is I don't like this. We need to start pushing out again. We need to start go. Yesterday I was very confident, even at one nil, that this game was over. I, I didn't at any point think that we were under under day in, in any danger of losing that game. I think Joe Roden has a massive top of chances from the corner, the second shot from the corner. 
it's a shot that nearly goes through Joe Rodon's legs and he closes them real quick and gets a lovely block on it. And that's that's three or four minutes before we scored a second. It's a huge block. Then it's again it's very, very smart position from a from a very good player. But yesterday was this was a totally professional game in possession. And it was a game when that incident happened with Rodon, all of a sudden Leeds kicked up two gears and it was like, okay. We're gonna need a second. We'll have to go get and they went and, and went and got it. And they could have had a third. John Dan James hit the post as well. So mm-hmm. don't be worrying about the, the build up being, being too slow at times. As long as the ball is moving quickly, be worried when there's players standing on the ball. So in the going back to those games where the ball went out the Cree on the left and he puts his foot on the ball and stops the game dead. That's when you should be worried about how we play. If the ball is moving and the tempo was slow, but the ball is continuously moving, I wouldn't have any issue with that. That's just moving them around again, then where we want them to get into getting them into positions um, before we can we can um, activate our triggers to get forward and, and attack. So, yeah, look, it was a very professional performance yesterday. I thought there was, there was a lot of really good performances. I thought Cree looked like he was coming back to his best yesterday. I thought he handled the ball in really, really well yesterday. Willie had a, with a good, good impact in his first half. Firpo was excellent for me going forward. I think he was key to 90% of the build-up on the left. Even just as that secondary option, he makes the run around the player and he just drags the fullback with him. <laughs> Try not to look at JT's face. It's very distracting. Um, <laughs> When he makes that run on the outside, it causes so many problems because Somerville always wants to cut inside. So the defender doesn't know do I go inside with Somerville or do I go outside with Fairpo? And they were switching up so well between the two of them. They had him in his pocket. But there was one one huge moment that I wanted to talk about. We talked about this for weeks and I, and I saw it yesterday. Is watch Patrick Bamford for Willie Nonto's goal. There's two moments in it to show you what a, what a number nine can do without touching the ball and why he's important. There's the first long ball that's played in towards Bamford and he just jumps backwards into the defender. He can't win the ball, but he just jumps into him. And that's enough for the header from the defender to go down instead of up and out. And that drops right to Jorginho who flicks the ball over to far side to Nanto. But just as Nanto cuts inside, Bamford makes a run right across the front of him. And as he runs across him, Nanto shoots. And that drags the centre back out a little, blindsides the keeper for two seconds. The next time the keeper sees that ball is when it's on its way past him. Like that's that's that little crossover from Bamford does that as well, and that's a really intelligent number nine as well. He's had two moments of impact in that goal without touching the ball at all. But again, yeah. knowing what to do to drag players out of position. So, um, but yeah, but it's good. But Matteo wow. Joseph must start. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow, not him. I I love it as well. I never yeah. thought I would be sat on a show with Jer. And he's the one gassing up Furpo and Bamford. I love it. I just got to <laughs> sit back with my hands up. I mean, I can't tell I what's never, more surprising. Here. Joe come doing here, that or have... Luke going to a match come and not here. drinking come any here. beers. You know, it's a crazy Big couple weekend. of days. But like, I've never said this, JT. I've, I've always said it. I'll criticize them for performances and I'll praise them for performances. I don't criticize the individuals. I don't latch on. There's no agendas. If you play well, I'll say you played well. If you haven't played well, I'll say you haven't played well. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's, it's true. That's fair. that's fair. I was gonna go Jack, but JT, come on, talk to us. Mate. Oh, sorry, no, 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 go Jack, go Jack. Okay, Keep Jack, you were you were you were at the game as well, mate. In my seat, how did you feel sitting in my Perfect seat? Perfect seat. Yeah, I loved nice it. Seat. Yeah, it's yeah. um, just stole my only point. The only reason I'm here is just to talk about that Bamford first. first goal play. <laughs> it actually is. I just wanted to say, just to add to that, Jerks. I think that is perfectly put, my friend. He effectively wins the header. You don't have to win the header to win the header. There was a guy behind me who you might know, Joe, but he was going, what has Bamford done in this first half? And I thought, just leave it, just leave it. But I thought, well, he set the first goal up. If he if he ain't up top there and it gets pumped forward, nothing happens. He's effectively won that header without winning it. We don't have to touch the ball. And then the run across, like Joe says, unbelievable, really unselfish. He actually gets out of Nonto's way because he could effectively, he's around the ball really, could really try and nick it or whatever. But no, he's out of the way. And then Nonto obviously is awesome. But yeah, just on, on Farke, there's I think we play like his character, don't we? Like his personality. Proper, like solid, but super confident, but not like that's what that's what I really like about him in general, to be honest. He never gets he never gets panicky when we lose our well, which we never lose anymore. But and but when we win, he's never and then but you know, he's super passionate and I think he's really strict with them, isn't he? And you know, he desperately wants to win the league. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. And um I would agree as well that he doesn't have don't have anything to prove, which um, I, th- I think that's bang on. He doesn't he doesn't have to, and, but that that comes with his confidence. He just thinks that's what they, it's running through the team. You can feel it. There won't much unrest either. I didn't think in Ellen Road. I, don't, I sometimes find it quite hard to process the actual game when I'm watching it live. If I'm not watching it on TV, but they didn't seem to be like 
against Stoke. I know that were a different game, but we just never seemed to be panicked, really. Like, a couple of moments, weren't there, from that Obafemi or whatever he's called. He, he did seem decent, to be fair. Like, got out as a bit. But other than that, really, you know, we were in total control, weren't we? It was just a matter of when, you know, and when that second goal went in, it was so mint. Well, because the angle I was at as well, I thought it looked like James had hesitated a little bit. But oh, he did, man. So, well, well, he picked his spot, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was yeah. awesome. He just totally, yeah. he just t- sold them all a kipper, didn't he? Like, put them all on the floor, basically. But it looked like he'd sort of taken a touch and thought, oh, but it's, uh, everybody were like, you know, going mental. But it's so mint. And then obviously, that little drop of the shoulder. That, oh, it was that brilliant. Little, yeah. I was like, oh, yes. just, you know, Love it. Yeah, it's awesome. He, how good has he been for us this year? I've I've actually, well, I've tell her likes. I never used to like James when he went to scum. I didn't like him at all. His face used to do my head in. But ever, ever since he came here, I'd, I'd, you know, I've got so much time for him. I always think he puts, even when we were terrible, when we, um, you know, when he got sent off towards end of season and stuff, he, he always put it, he always, he, he goes out and gives it everything he's got, doesn't he? he doesn't, you know, he doesn't hold back. So, yeah, I'm just proper happy for him, to be fair. Proper happy for the team. Yeah. Mint performance. I don't, I'm not keen on that. I don't really know what happened with Onto, you know, for booking. Did somebody really... Yeah, well, that I mean, he shouldn't yeah, get involved with it, though. It does my head in, Joe. That's yeah, the only yeah. thing about Nonto. It actually, it annoys me a little bit. I just yeah. think just, you know, it's too much. Just stay out. I don't know what happened, but it's just, yeah. he's always like... Cooper's, Cooper's grabbed onto him. Wait a sec, sorry. They're on top of each other, and then as Nonto tries to get up, Cooper brings a second arm around and grabs hold of Nonto, and Nonto right. kind of puts his forearm into his face and pushes him off him, like, oh, and, like it, yeah. get off. In other words, yeah, yeah, was, but then somebody like sprinted after him, didn't they? Like barged yeah. into him. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah. I think that George Savile or Honeyman, Savile, they yeah. were all at it, man. They were but, all. But at that's it. that's what they're there to do, isn't of course. it? And, you, yeah, and you, yeah. you're taking the bait, aren't you? you? That's all they wanted to do. Yeah. And then they yeah. brought them all off. The old lads that got booked, they brought them all off, dragged all new lads on. Just to basically do the same again, but we're going to have to. Well, it's, I suppose we're too late on in season, so need to get over that really. But that is what teams are going to come and do, aren't they? It's nature 100%. of beast, really. And I think we we learned probably... that Jack, we were be- we were better than we were. I mean, just the Stoke game and the Huddersfield game, we got the- we got bullied, and Blackburn earlier on the season, we really really got bullied. I thought they were okay with it; they, they were ready yeah. for it. We still got yeah, dragged yeah. into the odd game, but they were out of the whole game. Yeah. yeah, I think Nonto is that one player though out of all of them there where when he did get a yellow and I'm watching, I'm going, oh, I need to watch him because all it takes is yeah, he gets yeah. carried away. Yeah. He like gets yeah. carried away a little he bit. Does, yeah, yeah. And and very just, sure. early yeah. yellow as yeah. well was a bit like that's a bit early for Furbo. He because yeah. he likes a late <laughs> yellow card and there's probably another one in there. I thought yeah. it was a clean Pretty challenge, good. personally. I thought, I, I just doubt it. Actually. If there anybody else flying into tackle, I thought, yeah, maybe Warwickly, but when it was third part, I texted you, didn't I, Joe? Oh, like, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. Was that a foul? Because everybody's behind me saying it in, and I'm thinking, yeah, third part is. about is probably a foul, to be fair. But Yeah. He was off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if he connects with the lad's leg full on, he probably gets sent, to be fair. Really? It's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah, um, but... To be fair, with the with the Nonto thing, I think it, it, it can go both ways. I think obviously you've got to remain composed, but as a man that's not the tallest myself, I know from experience he's even shorter than me, uh, as Luke can attest to. But when you yeah, but he's bit, he's hencher than he's hencher than you, bro. He's hencher than you, which will pain you. Condensed, mate. He's just more condensed. You want me to take the jo- no? I'm joking. <laughs> no, uh, uh, what a pro he, team written on your bloody tank top. <laughs> no, no, no. The guy is um, as, as a smaller person. Sometimes some people think they can take advantage of you. So sometimes you've got to be a bit extra aggressive, a bit more spiteful, just to let them know. You know what? You try and mess with me. There's going to be some consequences. Here. I, so I think I, you should I, just keep I, beating I, him, JT. Just keep taking him on. He had him on toast, and like in that second half, he were doing that. He got into I know, a bit of a rumble with that irritating how... guy who got subbed off. And I he, don't just, he just kept taking him on. I don't disagree. Like on the ball, as you said, you do your talking on the pitch, but the way you say he gets a bit heated into things quite well, a lot. That's who he is, yeah. No, that's I what you and I think, yeah, I think that's a good thing so that people don't you know, try and mug him off. Yeah, I, I got that situation. The balls are around the pitch, and he still had hold of him on the floor. I'd mm. get, get mm. off him, you know what I mean? There's situations uh, where you're, boss, mate. Mate. Oh, you're at Ellen Road, you're at our house. All right, you think you can come into my house and mug me off? Not gonna happen. Ball so. got, ball oh, got oh, the line of... Yeah, exactly. What I was gonna say, uh, Jerry has anticipated that, right? That's it, it's all right, of course. The fact that he doesn't need to answer that Miro was too aggressive, but where is the referee again? Where is the referee? The referee needs to, to officiate the game, and week in and week out, we get referees not protecting the players. and 
facilitating by not uh, protecting the players, a level of aggression on the pitch. It looks like the 70s sometimes, of course, not the 70s, but <laughs> uh, more or Rebel. less, you know, the 70s was on another planet. But, you know, there's every time we play against those kind of teams, you know, they, they try to get uh, at uh, Somerville's and Nyonto's ankles, you know, they try to be aggressive. Look at the INE of uh, like the UFC MMA move that Rodon got right yesterday. You know, it's, it's, it's again, it, it, I don't, I don't like, I, I hope that the referee does a, has a good game, you know. Because it is a part of the game in the end. There's three teams, you know, the two teams and the, and the referees team with a photo official and the linesman. But where were they yesterday in certain occasions? Mm. Again, they didn't uh, officiate properly in certain occasions. And where's the linesman? Of course, the referee is like that in, on, on Rodon's tra trajectory, you know. But if the referee doesn't see it, there's also a linesman on that side. Where is he? Yeah, that line. There's the a couple arm, of bits with him that really. Rodder's face as well. See that one? But, yeah, I mean, Rodder gets a clear arm across his face, right? Which you could say if it's deliberate or not. If it's not deliberate, it's still a yellow card because he's running clean through one goal if he gets past him. And he he would get past him because it just he's faster than Cooper. Does that. Does the Joe Rodon one for lots of reasons? Not just the fact that it's a stonewall penalty, but the fact that, and it was pointed out, not only does he manage to knee Joe Rodon in the chest, but then he also handles the ball in the process. So it's twice a penalty like it should be a penalty for the knee or a penalty for the fact that he brings his hand through and plays the ball afterwards referee doesn't give that he's standing front right in front of it but the bit that really got my go up joe about um <laughs> that incident was not the fact that he didn't give the penalty it was that the fact that it was a head injury and a player yeah. had gone down yeah, holding yeah. his head in clear view and the referee let the game go the entire length of the pitch Imagine the discord back, what did yeah, what can i i don't know because he was at the other shine oh sorry no, no, just one sec, because the point of this is, in the rules of the game, you're supposed to stop the game for a head injury immediately. Immediately and get the player attention. He is down holding his head. You can clearly see there was a raised knee. And the referee not only waits until they attack, but until there's actually a break in play before he stops the game. And then he sprints to full length of the park like he's trying to get somewhere. The Nanto situation on the sideline as well. The linesman can very easily yeah. step in onto the pitch and break those two up. He doesn't. He stands over, and then both players get booked for essentially what was Willie Nanto telling another player, get your hands off me. Yeah. That's essentially what happened there. Your man made sure Nanto couldn't get up off the ground. He wasn't letting him get up. He was poking the bear, and Nanto pushes him to the ground, and then they both get booked, and arguably it should be Cooper getting a yellow card and Nanto not getting anything. But the linesman decides to not get involved. The same linesman that two minutes earlier watched the Millwall player pass the ball straight out of play and gave them a throw-in. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, that yeah, was yeah. The, the level of officiating that we had yesterday. It's some of the worst refereeing and officiating full stop that I've seen in this league full stop this year. And it's been dog shit this year. And that's as bad as it has been in a couple of incidents. But there were some serious issues yesterday with that. The fact that head injury was ignored to let a team attack and go on as long as it did before he brought it back. That guy shouldn't be allowed to referee at this level again. Yeah, and that's that's the problem because week in and week out. When a player, a football player, doesn't play well, he doesn't play the next game because the manager doesn't play him. These referees keep getting games, even if when they make mistakes, and they make another mistake the next week. That's the problem. That it's not about the um, the level of refereeing for me. It's about being capable and being fit to referee in this kind of situation in the EFL. Because right now, so far, I think there's the level of officiating. Oh. Overall, not just in the FL, also in the Premier League, also in Italy, you know, uh, there's the level has, has dropped massively in, in recent times, in recent years for me. That's that's the main problem. Mm -hmm. But not protect the players. Like, whatever about being a penalty, like, whatever about being a penalty, yes or no, the fact that it's a head injury and he's decided mm -hmm. to ignore it is a serious problem. Like, that's a big mistake. He's right in front of him as well, Joe. Literally right in front of him. See, I tell you, I think, in, I think he knew he got, I think the ref knew he got that wrong because after that, he seemed to be very, very lenient towards Leeds. Uh, it felt like that. In the, it might not come across like that on telly, but it certainly felt like after he'd made that mistake, a lot of decisions that were 50 50 throw ins, corners, goal kicks seemed to go our way. I don't know if, I don't know if that was, if that no, was yeah. true yeah, or he was not. A bit better. But he wasn't. Yeah. yeah, but they were still crap. But yeah. I mean, yeah, they were poor. Yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, um, shouldn't have been on the right. Yeah, he should have gone. He should have gone. JT, thoughts, mate? 
Thoughts on, on the that? game. On the game. Sorry, yeah. On my way here to... It wasn't a very clear question. Yeah, so I was sorry, gonna, mate. Sorry, No, uh, listen, uh, as I said, uh, I don't think I can put it any other way than to say it doesn't feel like I'm watching Leeds, you know, for the first time in my life, actually, which is really <laughs> saying something. It doesn't feel like I'm watching Leeds, and that is the most complimentary thing I could ever say because watching Leeds uh, has been painful. It's felt like we're cursed, like something's always waiting around the corner to pull us down. I've never gone into games when we're 1-0 up or 2-0 up, and it's not even confidence, but it's being comfortable. It's sat there relaxed, like, you know what? We've got this in the bag. We're not going to make a stupid mistake. We're not going to score an own goal, get a stupid red card, do a stupid back pass, have Cooper slide tackle our own goalkeeper and give away a goal. I don't feel these things when I'm watching these anymore. I'm sat there and if we get a goal, I'm like, you know what? This is good. Now they have to come at us. I don't think they're going to break us down. And I think we'll be able to catch them on the counter-attack. I think, yes, we're still quite wasteful. And we did waste a lot of chances. We could have gone about four or five up. I believe there was a good few chances. but. We're still taking enough of our chances to give ourselves clear headroom. And I would disagree slightly, though, that they didn't have a sniff. I thought they did have a few opportunities. I know Melier made a decent save in the half. There was that moment where Furpo kind of lost his man behind him and he headed it around. There was a couple of opportunities in there uh, from about the 50 to 65th minute mark that made me feel maybe slightly uneasy. But for the most part... I can't. Every time we're going into a game now, I'm going into it with confidence. I'm thinking, you know what? The players, especially attacking wise, we've smarted up so much more from earlier on in the seasons. We're actually finding ways of breaking teams down. And I think a big part of that is Furpo, as you said before, just the option that it gives us to double up on the left hand side. I think on the right hand side, you're seeing. I think Archie Gray and Dan James play phenomenally, as do with uh, Nonto. And as I said, the thing I like about both Roberts and Archie Gray, when they play on that right-hand side of the defence, is they adapt their games depending on who they're playing with. I think you see when Nonto, I mean, he's the best cutting merchant since Iron Robin, if I'm being honest with you. If you look at 90% of his goals from Leeds, he does the opposite of Robin. Robin used to cut into his left foot and curl it far post. Nonto cuts onto his left and cuts it near post. That's pretty, aside from the goal, what, Sheffield Wednesday, where he right foot him to ball. Iron Robin, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, mate. He's a cutting merchant. He does it all this. Mate, and, and you can't laugh at that because look at what Iron Robin was doing early on in his career at Chelsea. He was a nobody, really, and then he developed later on. Nonto's a lot younger than him, so he could still be on that par. You never know. But the way that when he does that, when he likes to cut inside, Archie Gray likes to hug the width and, and attack that way and, and really run down the channel. But when he's playing with a guy like Dan James, he changes it up. He's the one flicking the balls down, uh, down the wide areas, and he's coming inside and giving more of a presence in the midfield. And that adaptability to not just his game, but Leeds' game in general is what I think is allowing us to break teams down more. You saw a great uh, example of it, Dan James, second half, beautiful through ball to him. DJ just keeps it in, swings it into Bamford again. I thought potentially could have scored, but all round, I thought it was good. I thought Rutter, for me, I thought I thought he was very good. A lot of people were saying, oh, he's losing the ball so much, he's losing it. And I'm oh, looking, I'm like, you know, I'm not really seeing it. But I checked his stats and... He touched the ball 58 times and lost possession 30 times, which is quite a ridiculous stat that I saw. I was quite shocked myself. But the great thing about him is even when he's having a game like that, he still gets two assists and he still, you know, all he needs is one opportunity. And that's how I would describe Leeds. And that's what I think gives us confidence is it's a little bit, obviously it's the championships, so it's a different level. But, you know, Arsenal in that invincible season where they could be having a bad game, they couldn't really be doing much. All of a sudden, one time, Burkamp pings the ball to Omri. They have one one opportunity, one sniff, bang, bit of magic done. And that's how we do it now. But instead of Omri and Burkamp, we've got Rutter and Somerville. And I do want to touch on Somerville. I thought he was back to better. I know yeah. I know he didn't score, but I think he you could see now he's a bit more comfortable. As I said, he's not trying quite so hard. He's taking the extra touch when he needs to. He's taking it around. There's a lot more composure to his game. So I think he's been vastly improved. I hope the knock isn't too bad. I don't know if anyone knows. I've have heard much more on it because obviously he took the knock, went down for a minute and then came off for Jaden Anthony a couple minutes later. So hopefully with the time we have until Watford, he can recover from that. But listen, I think this is all signs pointed up. Just yeah. don't try Don't jinx it yet by saying we've won the league already. That's all I would say. But no, I thought it was no, a, I don't a great it. I don't Good. believe in that jinx. 
I don't believe in it. Honestly, I've been confident in this team and I'm confident now. Do you know what I mean? Um, anyway, but just on that Rutter stuff, um, I'm going to read some stats out now, okay? Because, like, his numbers are insane. So, And this is not This is just for anyone that, 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 you know, thinks... Like, there was someone on my watch along, actually, at half-time, says, I don't get why everyone gushes over him. He's not good and all this sort of stuff. That was roundabout what they said. Um, since the start of February, Rutter has more open play assists than any other player in the top four tiers of English football. Um, here's another one for you as well. Since Opta has started recording since 2013 to 14, only one player has more open play assists in the championship season than Rutter. And that one is Buendia for Daniel Farker. And it is only one more assist. So you would imagine with the eight games left, Rutter probably will surpass that. Um, he's only the second player in Leeds United uh, history this past century to assist more than 15 goals in a season. The only other player was Robert Snodgrass with 18, which again, eight games left. You'd imagine he probably gets more. Than, I mean, he gets two assists a game. This is what he does. Um, so, yeah, I mean, anyone who doesn't rate him or questions him, I would take that guy every day of the week. Okay, we can chat about the Premier League and, you know, what he's finishing and all that because we might not get as many chances, but we're not there. We're in the Championship. So right he's now... He's also a young player, me, Joe. Pardon? He's also a young player who's still developing his yeah, game. Exactly. So twenty-one. <clears throat> what we would have... Yeah, a 21-year-old, if you're on a half-decent Premier League side, you're probably loaning him out to the Championship anyway to get game time and experience and come back up, you know, so... He's doing exactly what he should be to say. He's not whoever said he's not a good player needs to seriously scratch yeah. their head and say, Should I be making public comments about football at all? Ever <laughs> full stop yeah. because that's yeah. a barmy comment. He loses the ball a ton of times in a game, but just that's the sacrifice you get for the creativity that you get from him. There are so many teams who don't have creative players, and we're lucky we've got one who's only starting to get going and what he's yeah. capable of doing. The rest of his stuff, when to release the ball, when to hang on to it, that'll come with experience and with age, always does. Daniel Farke will be teaching him about, you know, when to run with it, when not to run with it. That'll Again, that will come with time and experience. He'll learn a lot from this season as well. He might not be exactly as he is right now in the Premier League. He might be better because he might have less players doubling up on him. You know, Premier League players will worry about their own game. He might get a little bit more space to play in or, or more 1v1 chances. So, He's doing exactly what he should be doing at this age. In fact, he's far exceeding it. Go back to the first half of the season when Leeds weren't playing particularly well. And Jorginho Rutter had the most amount of big chances created of any player in any European league. I think the nearest player to him at that point was Mo Salah. Miles ahead of them. And the only reason they weren't assist was because we weren't finishing our chances. But he was creating big chances for this club. So he's been brilliant. He's been brilliant. He has. He can. He will frustrate you, but good players will frustrate you. Good players yeah. are always when you're screaming and past the ball. And he is, and, and actually corner. on that, uh, I know you've coached a lot of players, so you might have seen it more firsthand. But the fact that he loses the ball so much, but that he still has the confidence to pick it it's up from deep and drive past players, I think that makes it almost even more impressive because I think as he gets older and he matures, he will start to, you know, decide a bit more cautiously when he should be running and when he shouldn't, and he'll eliminate a lot of the times he loses it. But it's so easy to hide once you've lost a ball, once you put a bad pass in and the fans are getting on your back. It is so easy to hide behind people, let someone else try and take the ball and shirk responsibility. And the biggest compliment I can give him at his young age is he could lose it and he could have 20,000 people like moaning and whatever. He's straight back down trying to pick the ball off the centre half and drive forward straight again. And that is something that will carry him. It's not common. It's, it's, it's not even the frustrating thing in is though, I think the frustrating thing is that he does lose that ball and and, and obviously it frustrates Daniel Parker. He bases his game on possession type style football. He said at the start of the season he wants to have 100% possession and you can see it frustrates Daniel Parker. But as you rightly say there, Jerry, it, it's a sacrifice you make and, and we, we've got to be a little bit realistic here. He's never played in, in the 10 position. He's never played in the exactly. middle of the field before. You know, he's never played number 10. So it's his debut say. season at number 10 at 21 years old. In a, in, a, in a competitive league against players, against teams that are effectively having two men on him the majority of the time, you know, that that is bound to happen. And as you say, he's going to learn from it and he's going to come out of this season a much better player than he went into it. He's already exactly learned. This, look at him this season. Some of the stuff he's done this season since the start of the year, he's clearly developed in the number 10 position. He's developed better. But with JT saying there as well about the working back, that's not common in a skillful player. Yeah, agreed. Right, Jack, go on. I can see you're wanting to say it. And then, uh, Andrea, you can come in. Sorry, Just because I, I get a lot of this on channel about Rutter losing ball and stuff, but 
He also gets a ton of the ball. When when we actually when we go up, champions, we'll get less of the ball, and he'll have to be more careful on the ball. Give it. We'll have to move it about a bit more. We'll have to be more accurate when he uses it. Ultimately, he's getting that much of the ball. Is I think it's a massive confidence thing in the rest of the side. They want him to be trying to. That's the only way he can influence the game. He's not going to. I mean, he does get stuck into tackles and stuff, but he's there to beat players and like try and create. It's the hardest thing to do in football, like creating like the way that he does, you know, it's about beating a man, pulling people out of positions. It's impossible for him to not lose the ball. When we get it a lot less, he will lose it less because we won't have it as much. But he's all all you all he's been asked of him, I do believe, is to do two things a game minimum, or, or one thing a game really minimum. And he changes the game, doesn't he? No, they're in another, and I say this every time I come on your show, dude. But there isn't a player on the pitch on, for that second goal. There's nobody else on the pitch that, that's doing that in the box. He's unreal. It's, it's unbelievable yeah. what he's done there. And then the composure he's got on stuff. Definitely about J, what JT said about um, he never he never shirks it, does he? If he loses the no. ball, he's in, he's up. He's like, Give me the ball back. He just constantly wants the ball. That's the only way he can influence the game. And he does influence the game every single game. Everybody says, oh, he's had a bit of a bad game. It's like. Well, if he's if he's losing the ball, I don't necessarily think that means he's having a bad game. He's there to influence it a couple of wow. times, create a couple of chances. If we win two 0 he's involved in both goals. Standard every single time he's involved in every goal. That we, he's always got something to do with the goal. He just mm. can't score him. And, what, yeah. and if he starts, if he starts doing that, it, he's a joke, isn't he? He's literally, yes. he's he's got everything. But I, as I say, I think with maturity as well, he'll get, he'll just know when. He's just doing it every time now, isn't he? What, that's what I'm trying to say. When we get the ball less, he won't be able to do it every single time because the, the team will be too reliant on keeping the ball for a little bit. He knows that if he loses the ball, we will win it back within about 20 seconds and then he's off again. So yeah, that's my rutter rant. There you go. Andrea, did you want to say something, brother? Yeah, I was going to say what well, Luke's saying, basically. So I agree with him. What he said, you know, at least the first season in, in the number 10 position and... Uh, especially if, you know, I'm not a big fan of stats, you know, uh, but because they tell you just one part of the story. And these are pretty good stats. The other part of the story is that look at his movement, so the, the movement that doesn't get tracked by the, stack, the stats, you know. Look how he moves, how he creates depth and, sh and sharpness for the team going forward when he has space to turn around and carry the ball in the middle, when he has the space to play one, two outside of the box in the final third. He is massive for us in that role. Of course, he can lose the ball sometime, but I think he should really thank Daniel Farke for changing his role because he played mainly on the wing or as a second striker starting from the wing in Germany and in France with, with Stade René. And Farke moving him in the 10 now in, as it is creative attacking midfielder has given has give him just one thing, you know, the one thing he needed at his age, freedom. He gave him freedom to move, freedom to make mistakes, freedom to learn. And you, we, we, you, we, I think we all remember, sorry, I think we all remember the, the first games of the season when he was played in the nine, coming back, you know, with Piro in the 10. There, there was one game, I think it was against West Brom, where he barely touched the ball. Or West Brom or Sheffield Wednesday. I think it was at night, so West Brom probably, at the end road. He barely touched the ball. He looked lost that night. Now in this role, he has improved every game. Probably had one game or two when he was knocking in terms of fitness or didn't read the game properly in order to contribute, but he's still young. He, he has learned to auto-attack against teams that leave space in the middle. And also now he has learned to attack better. Not perfectly, of course, because it's always room for improvement. But he does better every time now with against low blocks in terms of how he needs to move when there's a crowd of bodies out of the opposition box in order to be the link up we need to switch the sides or be the link up to giving the ball and give the ball back to the player that passed the ball to him in order to, to, to make a run in behind. So still very young, I think. If he makes it to the top and he still needs to improve a lot, he will need to thank Farke massively for changing his role and developing him and giving him into freedom to to learn and to make mistakes too. 100%. 100%. I think, um, yeah, there was this, I mean, even like, look, Farker had a go at him for when he, the ball came over and he did the, the daft little flick to bring it down and all that sort of stuff. And 
People were saying, oh, he can't manage egos and all this tripe that was coming out just because he said he shouldn't really be doing that. But, you know, well, like... He doesn't um, have an ego, does he? No, exactly, bro. This is the thing. It's it's mad, but... Will, I they've all got an ego, haven't they? You need a bit of an ego, but, you know... Mm. Yeah, to bit. the level that was being suggested, well, yeah. I, 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 I don't think... I don't think Rutter has a big ego at all. And mm. and the reasons for that, all the things you look for in a player for for an ability to develop is, can they take criticism? Can they hold it on their shoulders? Can they continue to play when they're being criticised? That's already been said here at the moment when he did struggle. He, he got on with it, next game bounced back. Does he do what the manager asked him to do? Is he adaptable? Will he, you know, is he learning from the games? Is he growing as a player? Does he do the work off the ball, which to JT's point is such a big thing. If you lose possession, that's okay. But do you want to get it back? Because that's attitude. That's That's proper proper attitude really really good players will lose the ball and then go ah look at ronaldo for years ah someone else's problem now i've done my bit someone else fill in doesn't do that he gets on with it work rate's a huge part of a, of a, of a, of a if you're looking for indicators of what's going to be a really good player does he work hard rudder rooks his backside off i mean how many times the first half of the season was he in our corner flag tackling people when he should have been doing it in the box playing as number nine back in those games so he does the work when it's needed. He sees when the team needs an extra body. He will sacrifice his own position to get back in there. This kid, for me, doesn't have a huge ego. He has a bit of an ego because he's a pro footballer, but he doesn't have a massive ego. And for me, he has all the indicators of what could be a very, very good player, as long as he keeps learning and that's going to be his metric for success. If he keeps showing that he can adapt, if he can keep showing that he can add new elements to his game and keep doing the, the, the non-pretty stuff in football, if you can keep doing that on a regular basis, You'll adapt and you'll get better and you'll continue to improve. He's got a very high ceiling for me, not necessarily out of what he does with the ball, but everything he does when he hasn't got the ball. And there's a lot of really good stuff in there from a, from a very young player who could just be running around kicking the ball and letting somebody else worry about the problems, but he doesn't. He does it himself as well. So for me, I don't see there's an ego there to manage. And I don't and I don't think there's a player there who believes his own shit. I think he's very much a, a player who need who wants like, to get better. He, and he's showing when that. he got man at match and said yeah. on that point, Joe, when he got man at match and said you know, I didn't think I was that good when he coming down the tunnel. He's clearly like pretty hard on himself. You know, so anybody that thinks he, if you think he's had a bad game, he, he probably thinks he's had a worse game than you think. You know, yeah. but I think well, that's part of our expectations. Everyone, I don't know why everyone makes such a big thing about ego as if it's a bad thing. I think part of the why he is humble in that scenario is because he has an ego. I think part of the reason why he's so hungry to win the ball back or to create something when he doesn't is because he has an ego. No, I think an ego, ego is, is ego, a brilliant man. thing. I think if you're sat there as a player and you're thinking, listen, mate, I want to perform to my best ability. I want to impact this game. I want to help. That's not ego, mate. That's humble. They said the opposite. That is ego. Of course, that's ego. If you're sat there as a man... And you're saying, listen, I am going to be the man that wins this match for the team. I'm going to be the one that takes on two free players and I'm going to create something. That is ego. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think just everyone has an ego, as Jack said, and some are bigger than others. And I think he does in certain aspects of his life have an ego. And I think that's a good thing because he works hard to back up his ego. He that's trains true, his man. ass off. He does everything the manager asks. He does anything that he's asked for to back up his ego of how good he thinks he is. I think if you don't rate yourself to an extremely high level, you're not going to succeed and become that great player. You need that cockiness. You need the confidence and you need I'll a bit of cocky though. Cockiness in the right way. Okay. Absolutely. No, he's, 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 he's one of the, he's one of the most no, shy everyone, players. One he's one of the shyest Luke, players. One. He, 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 I, when I when I, I was literally on the touchline at Peterborough, and he was literally running up and down on the bench, and he was so shy. My little girl was shouting at him, and he was just, he was so coy. He, he, if you think he's got an ego, I mean that I think I think you're miles off. I'll be honest with you. You yeah. can be shy and have an ego at the same time. I know some people that have a big. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Wait, 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 we're all making wait, the same wait. point. Hang on, we're all making the same point, right? The same point is that he's a really good player who's getting better, right? But we're arguing over the semantics of how that is. Yeah. But to be very clear, an ego is not a good attitude. An ego is, I'm better than everybody, let me show you, but it's for you and you alone. Saying you do it for the team is not an ego. That's a humbleness that knows that your abilities will help the team. Any manager worth his salt will walk into a dressing room, spot the ego in the dressing room, and get rid of them as quickly as possible because egos have the, the potential to ruin dressing rooms at every single level of football. I have coached kids who thought they were the bee's knees and should be picked every week and they should get the ball all the time, but they wouldn't work when their team needed them to work because they didn't need to, because give me the ball and I'll win us the game. That's that's ego. 
Georgina Rutter isn't that. Georgina Rutter is hard work and effort and attitude, really good attitude because it's, this is, the ball's down the corner flag. That's our right back's position. That's his job. But he's on his own and everyone else is marking. I'm going to sprint 60 yards and double up and help him out. That's not ego. That's sacrifice. That is the exact opposite of what an ego is. That is putting, taking yourself out of the limelight to help somebody else. That's not ego. That's that's attitude. They are very different things. And ego is saying, I don't have to. Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo is the walking epitome of no, that's, ego. I would, I would argue all that about him. Right. not ego. Boys, let's just... I, re- let's, I respectfully disagree because it's a very nuanced fine. conversation well, okay, that could run for like half an hour. But yeah, That's let's okay. let's let's draw 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 a line under the the, the ego chat. We can agree to this. Can I just quickly talk about ego, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Jack, I love Joe. Uh, also, to add, as Luke W says, he's been playing with a hernia. Now we found out yeah. today that he's going to go for <laughs> surgery. Should be back within ten days. If you really, I would. I'm not worrying about it. I think they've played it perfectly. They have played him up to this point. He's pulled out of France. He's going for it. He'll be back. It is what it is. Um, and we'll have enough uh, we, without him anyway. I'm, I'm really conscious of time. Um, is everyone all right? I know some might have to shoot. Is everyone all right? We've still got a while. Um, right. uh, um, Lucky, I'll come to you because we haven't you haven't spoken for a while, brother. Um, all these older folks just arguing with one another, mate. You sat patiently there. Um, <laughs> He's older than me. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, forget it. <laughs> it's the argue um, with the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Look, I hate to use I this man. Ego. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's right. I hate to use this man, but one manager once says, "Attacks win your games, but defense wins your titles." We haven't conceded a goal from open play this year at all, Lockie. It's insane, mm. isn't it? Like, how can we ever lose? <laughs> <laughs> well, any one mistake can be a loss. You know what I mean? It's football, but. Yeah, the defensive unit, and I say unit because I'm on I'm on about Pascal as well because he's a huge part of this. Even if he's not playing, you know, he's, when he plays, he's exceptional. The unit, that central unit, and it helps with Gruev as well and Kamara who do, you know, I think one thing I didn't really appreciate, but when I went to the game, is how hard Kamara works off the ball. He works a lot, even if it's just a five a five meter sprint to get in position or cut a liner. He's so good off the ball, is Kamara, and so. I've, I haven't watched him because I didn't. He wasn't even playing the other games I went. He, yeah, so appreciative of what he does. But the whole unit looks solid, and that's kind of like a key. What what other team is really that solid defensively that you see? It's so it's genuinely so impressive. The fact that yeah, Jesse was right. There was one or two half chances with headers, but again, you're minimising the team to a header. You know that's an attribute that not all players excel in. You're not allowing teams to have clear chances. When was the last time? A team played a through ball through the centre backs. Yeah, it yeah. don't happen. I, Ampadu, I, I've got some. I did some stats earlier in my video. Ampadu made twenty four recoveries yesterday. Twenty four, all in his defensive half. Twenty four, which was more than anyone in the game. And recovery is when you know, obviously, they have the ball and he we win it back. Twenty four times, that's ridiculous. And watching him at the game yesterday, genuinely, it, it, it's too easy for him this league, for Ampadu. It is. He mm. strolls around. He doesn't act like it's too easy for him. It's just natural. You know, everything he does is in front of it. He knows what's going to happen. He's got the picture in his head. He knows the movements, the rotations. He's got it spot on. I think Millwall did a good job of stopping that ball over the top yesterday because we tried it once or twice. It didn't really work. And we adapted to that. But Ampadu recognised that when it didn't work. And he started to drive with it instead. And these are little things in a player that make you more than just a defender or midfielder. It's it's that tactical understanding of the system. And I find it mental. And this might be a wild take that Chelsea let him go. And this is what you've got yeah. to give players a chance for. I think he has every attribute to be a top player. I really do. Mm. Um, and the fact that we got him in the championship for seven million is ridiculous. And then you talk about his partner in Joe Rodon, who is just an absolute unit, if anything. You know, he's unbelievable at Kind of anticipating, you know, 1v1s when you think he's beaten, he's not. He doesn't dive in. He gets there. He rarely gets, tack- he rarely gets like, fouls. You know, he doesn't give fouls away that often. He's ridiculous in the air. You know, when when he came off for that head injury and he weren't in the box, I was, well, I'm worried because he wins everything in there, you know. It's rare to see a team that doesn't get played through. They might have shots at the edge of the box. They might play across in the box. But we never get played through. That is so rare. 
I just want to say something just really quickly, George, just on Georgino, not about his ego. Mm. The one thing I love about him and what I always have, and this is kind of a, a bit of a negative as well, he tries to do everything one touch, but never have I seen a player so quickly create an attack with one touch. And sometimes it's not even one touch. The way in which he uses his body to manipulate the defender and beat him, sometimes he doesn't even touch the ball, he just uses his body. I've not seen that, that, that player effective with one touch probably since Pab. You know, Pab could literally find one pass. Rutter's different. It's not a pass. It's more of a movement. But it's so effective. But the problem with that is he tries it all the time and he doesn't secure the ball enough for me. But he's 21. Once he defines that, his ceiling for me is probably bar Archie Gray, the highest in this division. I think it's a joke. And Jane, I've got a Dortmund thing on. He could, I, I could see him right now going and playing in their team. Maybe not starting every game, but affecting their game. I genuinely, he's that good. He's that, he's that flary. So that's it on Georgino for me. But defensively, we look solid. And actually, look at the game. I thought I thought the fullbacks were good defensively. Yeah. It wasn't a game for fullbacks yesterday, defensively, really. But just as in a position, you know, even off the ball, where they position themselves, the overloads that Archie was crying out for each time on that right side. Gruev didn't quite give it. I don't know if that's instruction or not. Because yeah. he sees it. He sees the pass. He's about to do it, and then he stops. So I don't know if that's an instruction. I'm not sure. But yeah. as a defensive unit, including the goalkeeper as well, who had one save to make, which was offside. <laughs> Look, yeah. you can't, there can't be any complaints. We are yeah. unbelievable defensively. How many goals did Nelson play this year? Zero? Yeah, zero. It's insane. What? It's insane. Like, for me, the, the, do you know what the best thing about it is? And people are going to hate it, but this is why I love to come back with receipts. Melier is going to win yeah. the Golden Glove, right? And he, and I guarantee you, they'll put him in team of the season. I can't fucking wait for it. Luke, I'm going to come to you, mate, because you've sat there patiently as well. Um, Archie Gray, let's talk about him, because for me, the growth that this guy's been on is insane. Like, it's almost like he's, exp I know he's actually had his birthday and he has got old, but it's almost like he's grew up this season and he's, he's, the way that he knows when to tackle, when to go, when not to go, I just thought it was phenomenal yesterday again, um, Luke. I, I, yeah, he's, I think, I think, I think, and this is going to sound a little bit backward and potentially a little bit sadistic, but I think the injury that he got, Last at the start of last season, which meant he wasn't able to play much Premier League football, has probably done him a lot of favours because he wouldn't have been put in a position where we might have been reliant on a. It would have been sixteen, seventeen at the time, um, and he didn't get trained and, by. He'd have got coached by Jesse. Yeah, he? so, he'd have been coached by by Jesse and, and Allardyce and all the other tools we had last season. So um, yeah, I think I think I think in in a way, um, being coached by a proper coach, firstly. He's, he's, he's obviously had a, a real, a real key to his development, but but also I mean to be mentioned by by Southgate in the England setup while he's been playing out of position at right back all season, not out of position because he's, he can play two positions. He's simply a right back or a central midfielder, isn't he? He's, he's, he's as good at both. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, but to be even mentioned by by the England England first fold manager, um, I think I think it's quite optimistic. By Southgate because I don't think he'd be in the job long enough to get Archie in the first first team. But um, He's winning <laughs> I know the Euros you'll disagree, Joe. Year, I, 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 hey, I know you'll about? disagree. We'll, we'll we'll lose the Euros and he'll get sacked and then Archie will get called up and we'll win everything else. Um, don't uh, you uh, not yeah, there, Andrea? Don't you be yeah, you Andrea. Fluky, mate. Don't you yeah, worry about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, he's he's it he's 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 because of Southgate. Southgate is not winning you. We will. We will win the Euros this year. Southgate is not winning you. Too good not to. Mate, Mancini didn't even qualify you for the last tournament. I don't want to hear it, mate. Yeah, mate. Yeah, don't, don't, don't worry. Don't start talking about that. So we, we need to talk at the trophy cabinet. Right, right, right. Bigger, back out, JT. Back out, back out. He's bringing up <laughs> trophies. Go on, uh, no, no. Southgate is, is not winning you the Euros. Trust me. No, I agree. I agree. I hope he does, but I, 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 I agree. But um, but yeah, I just I just think he's, he's, he's almost developed. I mean, I know, I know he's only got one year older, but he's almost developed in terms of his... his his whole demeanour, the way he carries himself, he's got more confident. We've seen him standing up to players, and he's got a bit of a bit of something between the teeth as well. He's a big lad for eighteen years old. Mm. He, he's a big, big lad. Um, so yeah, I, I, we, look, we can only hope it continues. I think, I think his ceiling is is astronomically high. I think, I think we're going to the moon with this kid, and and. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully he does it with us. Uh, he just grows. I mean, week in, week out, he's just such a such a level-headed young man. I think of what I were up to at eighteen years old, man. I couldn't even say it on here. 
like the sort of stuff I got up to at 18 years old and he's playing, he's, he's living my yeah. dream. Like, do you know what I mean? I mean, I've probably done things he's, he's never done as well. Like, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> somehow I don't doubt that. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, look, absolutely falling in love with the kid. Uh, and it, I'm allowed to say it now because he's over 18. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, the, here's a stat for you as well. Um, because the, I, I, again, I, I want to finish up on this because I want to. I want to get your thoughts on on like um, like where we go from here. But Leeds United are only the second team in Championship history to be seventeen points behind at the top of the table in a season, and then gone to end the the, the day in first place. Um, the last team to do that was Reading uh, back in two thousand eleven twelve, and it took Reading one hundred and thirty three days to do that, and it's taken Leeds just sixty five. So what an absolute turnaround by Leeds United and an absolute bottle job by um, by Leicester City. Um, folks, we have done an hour. There's so much more we could speak about, but I just want to know, like, are we going to win uh, win the league? Jack, I'm going to come to you. Are we going to win the league, bro? Sure. Yeah, come on, tell Easy us. Easy peasy. It'll be all wrapped up in... I don't, I, I'm not quick enough at maths to work out, but... Uh, we'll win league. I truly do. I've been saying it for months. Bit tongue in cheek, to be fair. But then when it did start getting on, I started really ramming it home. Like I've been saying this for months. But I, d- I did have you a genuine feeling. I-, I truly did think, you know, because everybody were yanging on about Leicester and how they've run away with it and all. And even I thought in my head, like you know, let Leicester can do whatever they want. Just ignore that and just crack on. Aim for second. And then, but just no team can do that. It's very rare that somebody does it for the full season. And like I've said before, and if they do. You just hold your hands up and go, well, they was on another level to everybody else in the league. It is what it is. Second is then first, isn't it? Because if they're running away with it and just nobody's touched them. But yeah. we beat them twice. I, I honestly think we are better than Leicester. We deserve to be top. I, I do believe that. Mm. So we will win and go up as champions, 100%. of course. Yeah, I love that. The mad thing is as well, like on Good Friday, all the games, I think it's Leicester, Bristol City, Southampton play, then Ipswich play then we play. Uh, and then again on, on Easter Monday, we've got Hull City, Southampton have got Ipswich and Leicester have got someone as well. So I reckon Easter could have a massive swing there or thereabouts. But uh, JT, are we winning the league, Broski? Uh, going to have to say no. going to have to say no. No. You, no? no? Are you doing that for effect or you don't think we'll win the league? No, but the game in hand, no. We're going to demolish the league, mate. Are you kidding me? It's not even a conversation. <laughs> Come on, man. Get out of here. Have you, have you had me there, mate, finish. bro? I can't Ooh, lie, you didn't didn't think that was going on any longer. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Jer- well, you know, I had to give a big gap, a 17-point gap, if you will. E- like that. Like that. <laughs> Joe, what about you, mate? <clears throat> Top two. Since the start of the season, the top, top two. I still think that I'm not going to get carried away myself with eight games to go. There's way too long left in this. It's way too early to be getting excited about stuff because well, we I can imagine beaten, what this man. will be like. I can imagine what this will be like in four weeks' time when we slip up. So I'm not going to jump jump to the to the we're going to win the league here. If, so I'm, I, if I yeah, think we still go win. If, I think yeah. we go up this year in the top two. And I'm sticking with that. If we win it, brilliant. But I'm not gonna get lose the run of myself at this point. But do you but think, think we will up. win it? I I said top two, and I'm sticking with top two. No, but I'm asking the question no, is: no. Do you think we will win the league? I'll ask me in a couple of weeks time. Ah, <laughs> he's bowled it. He's oh, bowled it. Like you getting carried away? Get Jill, off that like, fence, Joe. I don't want to get. I don't, yeah. I, I don't want to get carried away because what will happen is in a couple of weeks, like basically the way, the way I say it is this: the only team that's going to stop Leeds winning the league is Leeds. Right. So the question the only... I ask you is, will we stop ourselves winning I'm... the league? That's not what Come you asked. Yeah. That... Will we stop ourselves winning the league? You're sure yeah. reframing it. I know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Come no, on, I, Joe. I, I say if, it with if, some tezzes. I just don't want to be in a situation where we muck up against somebody and we're all on here devastated that we, we're not going to win it. You know. So for me, top two, it needs to be done before the last game of the season. I want to enjoy that game. Um, but the only thing that stops us from winning it is ourselves. There's no, there's no other way around this. If Leeds, Leeds, if Leeds don't slip up, and I think Hull will have a huge part to play in this, not just with Leeds, but with several teams, I think Hull will have a part to play in this. Okay. So, just no. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> I know I'm joking. Lockie, 
Come on, mate, yeah, don't just, you shake just it. Just got his coach's head on there. Respect yeah, it, exactly. Respect yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? And he, Joe, Joe's, Joe's right, you know, the only team that can stop us, well, if we've been theoretic, you know, Leicester can too. But, um, yeah, the only team that can stop us is us. But we've got Daniel Farker, who's won the league twice. So, of course, we are. Yes, love that, yeah. mate. That's, that's a and I can't hear answer. you because my earphones have died. So. No, yeah. <laughs> um, Andrea, talk to me. Yeah, we're winning the league, I think. Um, of course, uh, the, I think Leicester's cash schedule, schedule <laughs> that yeah, one, yeah. Uh, will play a part too because I think they have tougher, tougher fixtures than us. Compared to us, I think that they will they'll have to play Southampton in that game. And if switch too, exactly. And there's also other games, you know. Um I, I saw the their schedule this, this morning, but uh, there's also a, a, another couple couple of fixtures that where they can lose or drop points or Bristol or City away. Bristol City. Out, yeah. yeah, those those kind of games. I think we win in the league because I think maybe we can lose one. Or draw one away, but so far, if you look, if if I look at our schedule and the schedule, I think uh, ours is is easier because we already played the, the the top teams. You know, I think both teams will get promoted. Leeds and Leicester, us as champions, maybe one hundred and two points and one hundred and one. You know, will be very very tight at the end. Uh, so yeah, I think Saints will finish third probably. But yeah, my prediction is. Leeds champion, Leicester second, and Saints third, you know. Love it. Love it. And you can say schedule or schedule. That's the mad both. thing with the English language. Schedule. Yeah, yeah. Schedule <laughs> or schedule. They both work. Good, good. Um, so you were right on both accounts, mate. Uh, Luke, are we winning schedule. the league, Broski? Yeah, absolutely. We'll do it. With, we, uh, we'll be promoted with going into the Southampton game, and then that Southampton yeah. game will determine us winning the league, I think, on the last day. Um, I lost. don't think... And I hope, I hope if we, if we're already promoted by that stage, all the OKB boys are going in, uh, to the last game with uh, Connor Roberts tashes. We're shaving nice. all his beards off, and we're all going to have a Connor Roberts tash for the last game, just for something to do. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think I think I think winning that beating Millwall by the two goals puts top of the league has piled absolute momentous pressure on 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 Leicester. Now yeah, they've not yeah. seen it; they've not been out at the top. They've been top pretty much all season, other than when Preston were there earlier on, and Ipswich I think jumped in there once or twice as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's abs- They must be absolutely quaking at the moment because they've they've, yeah. they've they've bottled it as far as they can see at this stage. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're yeah, we're riding the crest of a wave all the way to uh, all the way back to the Premier League. Yeah, the mad thing oh, is, is as well, like, yeah, if they so drop like, points and Ipswich yeah. win, they're out of the top two on Good yeah. Friday. It's wild. So. I, I also think it, it's it sends a message to Ipswich and Southampton as well because you think it's Southampton's record record ever run in their history, and they're still not in the top two. And then you have Ipswich, who've been top two and been brilliant all season, and now all of a sudden Leeds are top and they're not. And you're like, what happened? When did that happen? You know. Mm. So psychologically, it starts to play play factors. Southampton, sorry, Southampton are the ones that have Leicester and Ipswich, not not Leicester having both with them. Yeah. And um, but just they their fixture schedules for the three of them leading into the last two weeks of the season is uh, Southampton have a game every three days. Leicester have outside sort of one week a game every three days. Mm, that's mm. that's not easy. One When's the up. FA Cup game? Because when do Coventry play? Because they've got an FA Cup semi final and we play them soon. So is that like in between our game at all? I uh, know their mm-hmm. Ipswich game is postponed because of that. I because of checking. that. Yeah. So do we play them before or after? Because you think Mark Robbins will go strong in that. So we have Coventry on the 6th of April. And when's the FA Cup semi? Do you know? I don't know. Uh, let me just have a little while, check. While you check that, JT, I have had a super chat in from my American friend, the official Zoom. Um, I only want one. I only want 20th. one answer. No, not 20th. Oh, so not, 20th it's not going to affect us. We'll finish up with this, folks. Because it's running over, I do want you to just give me one. No, no explanation. So he's asked, in five years, who will be the better player, Nonto, Rutter or Somerville. Luke, we'll start with you. Rutter. Rutter. Andrea? Uh, Somerville, I think. Uh, Lockie? Uh, Rutter. Joe? Rutter. Jack? No idea. <laughs> Give me one. Uh, Nonto. I'm going to say Somerville. And um, the tides have turned, Joe. Salisbury as well. 
<laughs> some of them as well. There you go. Love it. Right, folks, if you want more of your Leeds United fix, by the way, you're, we're not done here, okay? Because all to know better are going live straight after this, okay? There's 823 you're watching now. I want to see 823 years go straight on over there, right? So what will happen is you don't have to adjust your TV sets, your phones, your YouTube screens, anything. As soon as this one finishes, it'll take you straight on over there, okay? So don't go anywhere. Go on over there and grill Gilly in the chat because he doesn't rate Pascal Strauch. Just say you Or are Rutter. Right. He hated Rutter as well, by the way, back right, in the day. Right, okay. So just put Gilly, Give him Gilly, you don't know ball in the chat, okay? <laughs> um, right, so go on over there. Make sure you check out Andrea on Twitter, Lockie Leeds, Journal Leeds United, the view in the morning for all your Leeds United news which you'll need to keep on during the international break. Make sure you check out Jack City, City of Leeds fans, and of course JT at JT Live. But don't go anywhere. You're going to go watch Auto Know Better now and have a nice evening, folks. Peace out. Thank you, as always.